Uh, this is Sotilla Friday for uh, Friday, July 23rd, 2021. Um, and part of the reason we're recording this is just so that uh, Vincent's magical uh, chat recording poster can have more fodder. Oh, great. Um, uh, so we were going to talk a little bit about uh, Link Chainsaw. Um, and let's just dig into it. Uh, Vincent, you've, you've read you've read it well anyway. I, what I was going to do was pull up Postman and, and show it. Um, is that a good place to start? Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, and yeah, just to give some context. So we're trying to export a, um, am I correct? It's going to be a .txt file or just raw or just it could just be like a pasted text, and then the output will um, be a, link, a CSV of, of URLs. Um, so it's uh, it's set up as an API, so you can't paste anything into it. You have to hit it um, from Bubble or Zapier or whatever. Um, uh, and uh, since it's Link Chainsaw and not um, Zoom Chatter. Uh, link ch chainsaw will just take whatever text you want and it'll give you back uh, URLs. Um, I remember when Postman was just a little baby thing. Yeah, it's just the like, was the mail thing the same? Or is it no, because there was a mail, some kind of mail service also called Postman somewhere yeah, in the last yeah, 20, yeah. 30 years or something. Yeah, you're totally right. Um, I had totally forgotten about that. Postman, the it, the name comes from post, uh, like um, HTTP post, 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 right. get. Yeah, yeah right. Okay. Um, uh, and I think it was originally like a plugin or something like that. It was a, just a real simple thing that did API requests. Um, and then it's gotten built into this whole service, which is amazing. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Vincent, you use Postman, right? So this will look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Postman um, actually is like pretty easy to understand. As even someone who doesn't code, it's like quite yeah. good. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so this is what a request looks like. Uh, this is the URL to hit. This is going to change to have more link chainsaw in it and less Zoom chatter. Um, there's there's a whole there's a whole story here about having this on a subdomain. Um, Right now, my my uh, level of sophistication for deploying stuff would mean that I would need a separate subdomain for each different service. Um, so with some fancier technology, I can make this uh, api.tapco.com slash zoom chatter or slash link chainsaw or something like that. So I'll do that at some point. Um, so uh, it has to be post. You set it up with the URL. Um, if you look at parameters, there, there aren't any parameters yet. Uh, at some point, um, you'll need to give it an API key so that um, everybody and their sister isn't using this um, and crashing the server um, because there's too many people. But there's not even that yet. The only thing that you need to specify is body. And then you specify, I don't know why this is broken. This used to have stuff in it. Um, uh, you specify body. Uh, you have to, oh, that's that's why. Um, you have to specify form data um, and not the other formats you might, you might. And Vincent, we can talk about this choice. Um, I think form data is good for you um, and not, it's probably the best. Um, but then uh, you just, um, uh, you don't have to set the key to anything. So this one has a key of nothing. Uh, this has a key of uh, observe, it doesn't matter what key is. Um, uh, someday, I, I think this is going to be confusing in the documentation. You know, you can specify whatever key you want. It's probably a bad, a bad thing. So I think <laughs> someday it'll be um, make the key chat. Um, and then the way Postman works here, uh, I'm a little surprised. Oh. Um, I guess I could put chat, uh, text in here. That would be really cool. Uh, or you can post a file. So what Postman oh, so you, is going to do? So could you paste, could post either? 
Um, well, the when it turns into a post request, it doesn't specify whether or not it's a file. Really, um, is is why it could be either. I don't know if that makes sense, but um, let's try putting text in there and see what happens. Um, uh, this is this is really if if I call um, Postman a client, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, it's really a client thing, whether this is text or whether it's a file. Um, same thing if I were doing this with curl. If this were curl, I would put the text in quotes. And if it were a file, I would put an at sign and a file name. And then Postman or curl either just submit the text or they pull the file into their system and then and then blat out the text. Uh, so it also doesn't matter if you've got multiple um, multiple keys with uh, the same with with text. Uh, the keys could be the same or different. So you can have chat 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 or chat one chat two chat three doesn't matter. So let me hit send. Now cross my fingers up this work. Um, and it didn't work at all. Uh, I think the the problem here one of the problems is. Um, uh, I didn't save these meeting these file contents into the works in the Postman workspace. I don't know why this one didn't work. Uh, this should have done something. Um, and maybe that's a bug. But let's why don't try. You just uncheck the two files and yeah, send it again. Try it again. Good idea. I think it's a bug. So let me try something different. Um, so I'm just picking a random set of uh, markdown text here. Actually, maybe this is bad because I wonder if those hashes are screwing it up or something. There's no links in there also. Oh, darn, I was hoping That's some right. of these would be links. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, well, uh, let's try it. Let's try this text. Uh, I'm going to take over this one. So we should at least see input length change. Oh, that's disappointing. Um, Uh, so let me try the file, the file thing. Um, so these are various Zoom things here, which is awesome. We can't see the uh, um, requester. Your picker, yeah. It's probably just as well. So I'm picking something called uh, OGM Open Call. Uh, hopefully, there won't be too many private things in here that I'm reading into the recording. Um, so now, Postman has loaded that file into its file system, and it's going to submit the um, uh, submit the text. And if this one is zero, then we're going to have to debug it. Recording in progress. So, so I think offline, we don't have to debug it here, but I'm going to have to play around with text versus files and see why, uh, why there's a difference and if I need to fix something. So, uh, so I got uh, 17K uh, bytes. Um, and uh, this, the way it's set up right now, it returns a, a various, various returns. Uh, so um, this is pretty close to the original input. Um, it's actually got the line breaks fixed. Uh, there's a, a weirdness about zoom chats and line breaks. Um, but then you can see there's different links in here. So then um, Link Chainsaw goes through that, recognizes all the links, and then dedupes them, um, and then gives you back the links. So one of the things to note is it it's totally happy whether or not you include the URL scheme. Um, okay. 
So that's either a, a feature or a bug, depending on what you want, or it needs to be a parameter that says collect one or collect the other, or you know don't collect. Hmm. Okay, cool. Uh, there's another interesting thing. I'm using a library that um, there's there's two main approaches to looking for links. Um, one of them is to look at the RFC for how you specify a URI, um, and then you say, okay, there's here's a regular expression which will only match things that look like they're um, URIs, right? URLs. Um, uh, so that's one way to do it. Um, the other way to do it, uh, there's a cool library I found which uh, knows top level domains like .org, .net, um, .ai, it knows all the, the weird ones, .in. It, it knows, uh, it actually does a lookup. It says, give me, asks another service, give me all the top level domains that are valid. So um, the URI specification will let you put anything for the, the .dot part, you, know, you could put .dot foobar baz. Um, and it would still be a valid URI. Um, it would not be a particularly useful URL um, because it, that top level domain doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. So the, the library I'm using only looks for top level domains that exist. And then it, it looks left and right from there until it finds characters on the right that can't be in a URL and characters on the left that can't be in a URL. Um, and then it stops. And it, it works really well. Um, and it, it is also smart enough to, well, it, so it, it has the, the value added over the regular expression met, uh, method that it's only ever going to match. There's, there's some kinds of things that look like URLs that aren't, and it doesn't, doesn't match those. Whether or not this is a real URL is another question, but, you know, because people come up with weird, weird company names, you know, um, <laughs> So there you go. That's the way mm. it works. And maybe Vincent, you, you could we could flip screens and you could go to Bubble and try to make a API request, and we could see what happens. Sure. Yeah. Um, so you said there you need an API key. Uh, you do not yet. Oh, you don't yet. Okay, but you yeah. will. Yeah. And the first API key is going to be something like alpha test. Um, but then at some point, I would I would DM you an uh, an API key. You don't, yeah. Okay. So basically, um, so this is Bubbles um, API connector block, yep. which lets you define your own API calls from the Bubble editor, and then you could choose when to use them. So like I would choose to use this like post call anytime somebody pastes Zoom ch like a Zoom chat into the text box on yep. the event page. Um, it actually says a good practice is to get it to work mm -hmm. first. Yep. So we did that. Um, okay, so I have, um, let me collapse this. Okay. It's right. too bad they didn't steal the, the Postman interface. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Which that Postman interface is, is complicated and, and was hard to implement, I'm sure. So yeah. this is fine. So so there's no, so OK, I'm calling the API transcript links, or what should I call it? Should I call it Zoom Chatter? Um, I would call it, uh, you should call it Link Chainsaw. So this this name is just for you to remember what, what service you're calling. OK, and then I'm going to. And then it's going to be, there's no authentication. Certainly none or self-handled, yeah. Okay. Can you um, select that again just to see? At some point, it's going to be private key. It'll be private key and header. Well, or maybe URL. Private key and header, probably, someday. Um, are there any? Um, no. Nope. Nope. OK, so no headers. All right, so and, then. And no parameters. Okay. Well, actually, that's not true. But there's not shared parameters for all calls. That's that's true. OK. So then going to the first one, so I'm just going to call this post, um, post chat. Um, Bubble, they, yeah, they want you to make this use as action if you're going to be um, posting. And then data type is going to be JSON or 
text. Um, that's a really good question. Let's leave that one and add a parameter and see what happens. Okay. So I put post and post then I put right. and that's the right. URL here. Um, yep. Are there any parameters that we're going to go? Yeah. If you down? if you go down a no, there's no nothing on the on that the URL line. Um, but we might we might put stuff later like uh, format or type or you know um, blacklist or something like that. Okay. Um, so then we can add either headers to this call. We don't need we... headers. The body type is interesting there. So yeah, we uh, could go so form data. Form data. Yep. And then we're going to add a parameter. And and actually select that one again and let me screenshot that because. JSON, you mean? Uh, we're going to keep it form data for right now. That's what what I'm using. But it may be that JSON is is better. But it's no, leave it form data for now. Sorry. Um, so you can leave key blank. Uh, you should, I don't know, you could tick send file maybe. Except. <laughs> now it changed to value upload, is that? Yeah, so somewhere else you're going to d define the upload. I think, I guess actually, I don't we're know. We're using a file or we're going to do, I thought you said it was going to be just text. Um, well, this is, this is how it's gathering the text. So if you've got a Zoom chat transcript that somebody's uploaded, it looks like you could use that file to send. Does that make sense? In that chat file. Like a yeah. dot txt file versus like copy and paste from the dot txt file into a text box. Yeah. So the thing to do might be to look at um, where you're letting somebody put in. I guess. Uh, so when you imagine, I, I, well, I guess if if I were an event organizer. I would want to be able to upload this, the meeting chat text. I wouldn't want to open it and then copy and paste and then paste it into a text box. Okay, it's up so, to you, but uh, let's see. Try try that and see and see what happens. Maybe add add parameter and then, or I guess add parameter adds another one. So I'm going to upload a text file real quick. Um, uh, pick something for that. <laughs> so yeah. it doesn't look, doesn't look odd. I'm just going to call it. Um, I like chat or text or Um, all right, let's see. Initialize call. Yeah, I think that's probably uploading the text file. So it's not doing what I thought it might do. Well, maybe yes, not. That's, I think so. So it says, so let's see, the body input length is. Mm -hmm. 2306 body links list it looks like there's one um, body lines list from vincent to everyone um, error status code 200 yay that means good yeah oh so this went out and called and called the url yeah so it worked Oh yeah, so look, links, workflow, Eureka, Catalyst, Airtable, sounds like things I like. <laughs> um, nice. Okay. Hooray. Great. So now 
um, basically I have this, this is the bubble logic. So when the value in the text, your Zoom notes, well, actually, no, I'm gonna have to change this to a file upload probably. It's, it's up to you, either one would work and you could actually do both. So I have a call notes file here, click to upload a file. Mm -hmm. So this is gonna be file, I'm just gonna call this um, text file uploader. And then we're going to change this to text. When inputs values changed, and we're going to think so. Okay, um, then we're going to run link chain, so post chat. Uh, and then, okay, so it's either a static file or a dynamic file. So we're gonna do dynamic file. And then this is gonna be the, this file uploaders value. Okay, and then, so then it's gonna return the links. And so then after that- um, uh, You have to parse the JSON. So there's an array of links um, in body.links. So there might be, we can add a step in the middle, but what I think we're gonna, what Trove wants is basically to create a list of things. Yep. Um, so convert to list. Uh, create a new thing. I'm just gonna try one. If you can get one to work, I can get the other one. So um, this is gonna uh, be URLs. Yeah. Yeah. And then the so I'm just gonna see if we can just write the uh, bodies body links. Yeah. Body links, and then I'm just gonna do the first item. Um yeah, you could actually, I, I think body links would work. Well, so this is, um, that's oh yeah, be, a new URL. Yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah, you're right. yeah, so I'm just creating one. And then if I can get this to work, I can figure out the best yeah. way to parse it yep. many. So let's see. And then we're probably gonna want the uh, curator user to be current user. So that way they can delete them. And then um, Okay, so let's try this. Oh, wait, actually, we need to do one more thing. I would I would love to see somebody do kind of a uh, do the do the do the same thing in bubble and in some IDE in JavaScript or something like that. <laughs> to see you would, to see uh, but the, the complexity is the same. It's just the the interface and and IDEs nowadays are have a lot of that same autocomplete stuff and you know lookup stuff and things like that. Mm. Uh, Bubble is not easier than writing a, a, a node app or a Python app. It just has a little bit different interface. <laughs> Might be the case. Well, it's not really oh, a surprise. <laughs> I agree, and uh, I've got to take off soon, but uh, um, while I uh, 
was watching and uh, uh, loaded uh, Bubble.io to take a look at things. I also, of course, went to the, well, maybe not, of course, um, uh, looked up uh, the GitHub re Python requirements and URL extract and URI tools, blah, 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 blah. Um, thanks. Uh, enjoyed listening. And uh, I will try to see you um, in the world and uh, online next week. Thanks for coming, Mark. Yeah, it's always thanks. great to see you here. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thanks. I got to jump off in five minutes because my wife and I have another Zoom call at noon and we got to get prepped. Sounds good. Yeah. Uh, thanks for hanging. Yeah. Um, I don't know what's going to happen with the system thing. I really don't know how. This is the kind of discussions I don't know how we're going to have. I know you liked my rant, but I actually was trying to, you know, Got to, got to wait to see, I, you know, I know, got to wait to see what the thing is. Yeah. Um, and I don't know about AIs writing everything. It'd be interesting when they start writing poetry, if we consider it poetry. Because I remember years ago, there was a, a fellow at RPI who wrote this program to create music. Yep. And a friend of mine who was in, another graduate student, he said, well, it's, I don't know what it is he's created, but it's not quite music. <laughs> yep. 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 That sounds about right. And that was a guy who, who had built a harpsichord in his, in his yep. uh, living room. So he's like, I, I don't know what that guy's doing, but, <laughs> you know, yep. interesting. <laughs> uh, with something like poetry, I, th I think what you learn pretty quickly is that... Um, <clears throat> Uh, AIs are pretty good at poetry already, or, or what looks like poetry. So then you have the question of, you know, I, a lot of humans don't write very good poetry, um, and a machine can write better poetry than, than many humans. But, but there are certainly some humans that write amazing poetry, and you would say that's poetry, and a machine can't do that yet. Yeah, I don't think I agree with you, but interesting point. <laughs> No, seriously, I, I, uh, I, I would I, love I, to dig into that more. Um, there was uh, an edition of the Encyclopedia Britannica, which had under poetry, the first sentence was, poetry is the other way of using language. <laughs> and I'm like, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> it's a definition I carried with me for a long time. I, you know, I, I have to say, you started with music, and this, the, the same thing is true of music. A lot of, uh, not popular music, because that's been through a filter, but people who just write music, you know, like second or third rate film scores or something like that, a lot of them don't write very good music. Um, and yeah, it's a, you know, taste this one. It's interesting. <laughs> I mean, it really is interesting. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to talk more about that. Um, it would probably be a, a different call, the textual call or... Well, I can, it would be interesting. I would like to see where our, some of these little um, threads go. Yeah. My, my insight this week was, well, the way we're trying to divide, we have all these threads and Madame also got to divide this out, make a distinction here. So it's going to get fractal. So since I've been reading about infinities, it's like, okay, are those denumerable or not? What's what's the deal? <laughs> How big is that space? <laughs> yep. Anyway, have fun, man. It was been really interesting, and I I love what this is what's happening. Um, I'd love to see the outputs. It'd be great. Yeah. Thanks, Bill. Thanks. And it, so just before we go, so we it works. Uh, so we successfully um, added a link called, which is Workflowy, which is the first link in the list to Trove. Now, the only thing that does not work yet is we have to then send it to another API to get the title, the description, and the image from that link. <laughs> All right. Adios, gents. We'll see ya. Thanks, Bill. Bye. That's awesome. Cool. So.
Um, I'm just going to go to the debug mode and see what's happening. Um, the, the other URL is paid or not paid? Or the um, other API? It's not paid. Um, so Link Chainsaw could do that for you. Oh, it could? Yeah. That, yeah, that would probably or, be. Or maybe, maybe an enhancement request we could submit to the Link uh, Chainsaw's maintainer would be to, to add that. Mm, OK. Yeah, that, that might be helpful to not have to, especially if we're iterating through a bunch of links. I don't Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's uh, Link Chainsaw won't be able to do it faster, obviously, but at least it would be less messy for you. Um, so what, uh, what service are you using? Um, I'll show you in a second. I don't have it memorized. No rush. No rush. Um, let's see if this works. You're trying to get more than one now, or? Uh, no, I'm just trying to see if it'll do the get. It'll oh, the, the other one. The data after. Yeah. Um, sometimes Bubbles um, debugger is a little buggy. <laughs> yeah. There's this one really annoying thing. It's if you have something that's running like every second, then you can't debug anything because every time you try to do yeah. the debugger, it's just going to catch those things before you can click anything. Yep. There's, um, yeah, bugs, of course, happen in uh, in software development, any software development tools or testing or any, anything. So I, you could kind of imagine that uh, open source test tools, open source debugging tools, open source development tools are better just because some developer is going to bump into a bug in, you know, the the debugger or the editor or something like that. And they're going to go, I can't work and I have to fix that bug first. So yeah. they pull the code for, you know, the IDE or the, the debug tool or whatever, and they fix it and then they post it back. So yeah. software development tools get, get bugs fixed real fast. Yeah. Yeah, bubble is that's yeah, one probably downside. Yeah. Um, a lot of people build plugins, open source plugins to work around the bugs. Um, yeah. But like the core bugs are are hard to work around. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, this is actually being really slow. Um, so I think I'm going to give up and refresh it here. I wonder what bubble itself is written in. And I wonder if a lot of it is written in bubble. I think it's coffee script. Yeah, you're right. Or at least that's where it started five years ago. Um, so it looks like they ported from CoffeeScript to JavaScript. They they wrote wow. an open source tool to do that. And okay, interesting. So it looks like it is. Uh, it's adding a new link, and I think it's getting stuck at the GET request for the URL. So the issue might be with that microservice. Um, or maybe the work that workflow URL is weird somehow. It's could unlikely, be, I guess, but it could be that too. Uh, it doesn't work for every URL. Uh, so 
let's see. What I will do is probably just take the workflow URL and try to run it through yeah. the way that it's been working, and we'll see if that does it. Okay, so it did um, pull the meta title, Collective Intelligence Collaboratory, and um, it pulled a description but no image. So let's see. Yeah, meta title, description. It's probably just Workflow. They, they probably don't present a good image or present the image, I present an image well. Although I guess it should fall back to a favicon or something like that. So let's see. Um, this is the full meta full metadata link workflow. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do this one. One of the things that I'm running into is it's way easier to just click edit event, like change the URL to like change things. And I don't know how many people would figure that out, but it's like setting up all the redirects where it's like, if you don't have access to edit this event, should I like let people who are not logged in, you know, hard put the link in the URL to their event to edit it. Is that going to be, I feel like more people are going to want to edit the link that can't edit it because they're like not logged in or on a different computer than people that are going to like go to somebody else's event and change it. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, all right. It worked. Cool. So we got the first link into Bubble, and then it looks like it pulled uh, everything it pulled before, at least. So, okay, cool. Yep. So we're good. So basically, cool. the, the next step would be to make this work for the whole list. Um, so I don't know off the top of my head the best way to do this in Bubble because Bubble doesn't make it easy to do loops because they don't want you to like use up <laughs> 20 there, minutes of. There should be, there should be something that takes a, a list. Uh, in, in one of those things you had along with create a URL or something like that, there was convert a list. So I wonder. So for the list, there's make changes to a list of things, delete a list of things, copy a list of things, convert to a list. It, it may be copy a list. So for security reasons, this action will only copy lists that have less than 100 items. All right. Um, yes, yeah, security. <laughs> Well, it says security and performance. It's really performance. Yeah, it's really performance. Uh, okay, so 
list to copy. Huh. This, well. Well, this... I don't have to know how this thing works. So that's not quite the right, that, what this does is creates a new list, right? Well, which, which maybe is what you want, I don't know. So there's a few different workarounds to create a list of things. Um, yeah, that's, the, that's what you want right there. Except you don't even read it well. Ray is a list of episode. I need to create a new thing for each episode with a text. Uh, okay, let's see. So here's a post call. So you can schedule a workflow on a list. But this, I think what that this is trying to do is a little fancier than what you need because I think they're actually transforming each item and you don't even need to transform it really. Although maybe you do, I guess you need to change it from the text representation of a URL to, you know, a URL item in the database. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think, I think what we're probably going to do is do a, um, and this is probably the one downside of bubble is that, they don't make these things very intuitive. Like what's the, I don't know the difference between an API workflow is and an um, yeah. action. So let's see, this is scheduled API workflow on a list. So I think this might be it. Um, so I've never done this before. So this is URLs. List to run on is going to be the chainsaws um, links. which is going to be a list of texts. Um, so all right, let's see, new API workflow. Okay, so I'm gonna, so this is gonna be create URL list. It's a, we're gonna give it yep. text and it's gonna be an array. Um, and then here we're going to create That doesn't quite work because text is a list of texts. Hmm. Well, maybe it, maybe it does. Maybe it knows that. So 
So we would just need to, well, let me see. So there would be another parameter here for an event, which would be the event that somebody is, um, Um, okay, so then events add would be the event. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, this might, if it's, because it's running a it on an array, I wonder if. Yeah, it, it may just know that, yeah, it's supposed to. It's going to loop it. Um, so, okay, let me go back to the event. Okay, so the list. I wonder if we just make this text. So it's going to run the list on the array of text. The workflow is going to be create URL list. Okay, and then the text is going to be uh, so this is the list to run on. The text is going to be this text. So it says it's on a list text, should be a list of text, but right now it's text. Okay, so we're gonna just, which is weird. I don't know what the difference is. Um, I think you're probably figuring out, but I found a, an example of something that's very similar. If you want to look at it. On the right path with the create a list. Oh. Um, uh, uh, so they have a, a backend API workflow and they have parameter definition is manual definition. And then they have Oh, the response type is a JSON object. I don't know if I wasn't watching. Maybe you've done that already. So, um, so they have parameter de de definition, and then they have a thing called key, and then they have the name of the key, and then the type, and the type of the key. It's not a list. And then the response type is a JSON object, and that's what that's what does it. I think. Hmm. Um, oh, hold on. So I just did it to see what happens. And it looks like it's creating a bunch of links. So uh, let me see. It's kind of working. Workflowy, workflowy. Okay, they're all workflowy. <laughs> Which is, you never, no. Did you ever change? Yeah. You've got the thing that's at uh, first first item, right? So this is so this is uh, scheduling the workflow on the list of links here, and then I guess each time it's um, 
create URL list. Okay, so each time it's creating URL, it's just gonna be the the list. And I guess it's so yeah, I feel like there needs to be a way to like loop through them. Hmm. Um maybe maybe look at the example. Or the the other one that I Yeah, did you post it in the um, in the, in the chat? chat? In Zoom chat, yeah. Give me one sec. Um, uh, we're at ten ten or at one ten. Should I uh, stop the recording, um, or should I keep keep it going? Yeah, you could stop it. Uh, so we've uh, we've more or less uh, got it solved. Uh, just some little fiddly bits about getting the list going in bubble, and I'll stop recording now. Awesome.